Is it possible to build wealth during an inflationary period? What is inflation? Why do I care? <laughs> We're going to answer these questions and more coming up on Sage Smart Solutions. I'm Mark McKay. And I'm Marcy McKay. Please like and subscribe and join us weekly to find out new ways to protect your assets and retire tax free. All right, Marcy, we've heard it. It's been all over the headlines. 8.5% CPI year over year. I've, I've actually, one thing that, that I've noticed recently is that you, you, when, when things get a little rocky, you start to see that some of these people that you're taking advice from really are just talking heads. Um, I, I, I saw one guy was like, you've got to buy gold because, and, and I don't disagree with him, but because prices are the highest they've been in 40 years. Well, you know, I could have said that yesterday right. and the day before and the day, you know, what's, what, what's the highest it's been in 40 years is the rate of inflation, which it is very high and it is something to be concerned, but what do we do about it? What, what do you think cause, you know, why are we in an inflationary period right now? Is it the war in Russia and the pandemic uh, sort of uh, That creates the, the pandemic is a, and, and it's more so that we're comparing prices, you know, demand for a year went away, right. you know, unless you were Amazon or right. YouTube, yeah. <laughs> and, Netflix, um, Netflix, Hulu, and every other streaming device. Yeah, or Zoom. Um, <laughs> but global demand, you know, for, you know, oil went to zero. Right. Or, you know, the commodities or the futures prices on it two years ago. Um, so we're comparing prices to previous periods in time, but there's also been an incredible amount of money printed for the past 14, 15 years. And so that's, that's what creates inflation. Too much money, too much demand. And like not enough action. Well, supply can't keep up with it because you get a lull and there's always a lag. But, you know, I was thinking if, you know, if you're under 40, you might not have really ever experienced an inflationary period because right. what, what happened is when the markets crashed in 2000 and when the markets crashed in 2008, the, the way the Fed tries to re-stimulate that is by paying you so little on your savings that you're like, okay, I have to go put it somewhere else right. risky in order to keep up with, you know, even though inflation is very low at those time periods, you, you, they want you to go out, they want to create inflation. They want inflation to be three, four percent, maybe two, you know, depending on who you talk to. And okay, so explain to our viewers what you mean by the saying, don't fight the Fed. You've said that for years. Don't fight that. You know, that's a good point because I, I did mention how the Fed, that's who tries to combat inflation and, you know, keep the economy not too slow, not too, you know, they want that uh, Goldilocks. They right. want the Goldilocks just economy. Right. And guess what, guys? It's rarely just <laughs> it's right. It's like this instead. <laughs> we get inflation, we get deflation. Anyway, um, when, when, when we say don't fight the Fed, it's when the markets crashed in 2000 and when the markets crashed in 2008, people didn't want to mess with it. They didn't want to put their money in there because the 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 risk was too great for the reward so, so it scared them off so what the fed does is they say okay if you're taking the money out of the economy we're going to lower the fixed rates so much that you know john q retiree takes his money out of the bank cd okay and puts it into the s p 500 index fund that uh you know bank whatever but 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 money that goes back into equities and the, the, the problem is that, you know, it, it, when, when they were doing that in 2008, 2009, 2010, when they just kept cutting rates and cutting rates, right. people were like, oh, the markets are too risky, but institutional investors are saying, don't fight the Fed. If the Fed's going to cut interest rates, put your money in the market. Now- So like follow their lead? Well, they're, they're just saying that the market's going to go up okay. if the Fed is cutting interest rates because that's what the Fed wants. They're okay. pumping money into the system. Um, when, when the problem with that is that if you get it too hot, you get inflation. Right. You get $4 oil. I've had two occurrences in the past month that one I've never had before, and the other one I haven't had since 
I think 2008. The one I haven't had since 2008 was the gas pump cut me off. Oh yeah. They, they you know, they pre-authorized me for $75 thinking that was plenty. Well, it didn't quite fill up the tank uh, a couple of weeks ago. And then again, we, um, we recently, we, we drove 2000 miles in, in five days and one of the tanks cost me $91. No. I just had a horrifying thought of a tank costing a hundred dollars, yeah. but, um, 91 is pretty close. I haven't had that one before. I got, I got a little gouged, uh, <laughs> don't, don't get gas in Memphis, uh, Tennessee. I don't know about Memphis, Texas, but, um, that is definitely inflation. People are feeling it with gas. Well, okay, but so don't fight the Fed. The, when the, when the, the Fed was cutting rates and, and money was moving into the markets, they're like, you know, just put your money into the index funds, write it, don't fight the Fed. Right. Now, when the market started getting overheated and inflation started go, getting overheated and gas started costing 409 in Memphis, Tennessee, what's the Fed's tool? They start raising interest rates. The, 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 the saying, the cliche, was actually designed around don't go into the market while the Fed is raising interest rates. Right. But Wall Street, when, when the Fed was cutting interest rates, they were using it because it's bullish. It works for them. But now that it works against them, and it's really a matter of safety and not greed, right. don't fight the Fed. If the Fed is raising interest rates, that's going to pull money out of the stock market. Crypto is going to pull money out of the stock market. They don't like anything. Wall Street doesn't like anything to be pulled out of the stock market. Yeah, just their fees. Right. Um, <laughs> so don't fight the Fed. Another one that, that you know, we, we've got a twofer, sell in May and go away. Oh, yeah. So the majority of the returns in the stock market occur in the in the first five months of the year so statistically if, if you are just invested in the, and i'm not advocating that anyone time the markets um because you know these people at wall street who have been bailed out time and time again merrill lynch is not merrill lynch anymore it's merrill lynch bank of america because they lost all of their money and we bailed them out you bailed them out <laughs> marcy bailed them out i bailed them out so Anyway, <laughs> those are the kind of people that are telling you defer your taxes. Right. Put it in the stock market. Get diversification. Right. You know, we're even starting to see a correlation between crypto and the stock market. So where are you going to go? Okay, what can we do yeah. during an inflationary Let's period? Let's positive. <laughs> one, one key way you can help keep up with inflation is to put your liquid assets to work. Okay. Well, what if I need them? What if I we have tools for that especially if you've got a business or you've got say you own some rental houses or some some short-term rental properties or some raw land or a small business or dry cleaners we can put that cash that you have to keep on hand for inventory taxes bills we can keep that working for you so it can be over here earning five percent and when you need it we go and borrow it at three and a half percent if we don't need it, we pump, we borrow money and we put it into the, to the cash manage account. You've got checkbook safety. You've got checkbook access. We can structure this so that it will provide double digit returns without stock market risk because those banks that gouge you on one side and pay you nothing on the other side, we can learn from them and we can use their money. So if they are willing to loan us money, at three and a half percent, you get more bang for your buck. Let's go put it to, to work at five percent. And you're like, well, why would I want to borrow money? You put all you can in at five percent, then you borrow all you can. At, if, if you have access to money at less than five percent, it's just simple math. And if they are willing to do that without additional collateral, do it. This makes sense. Safety. Now is the time. And when we talk about double digit returns, tax free. Okay. Safety, liquidity, protection, liquidity double, huge. double digit returns, and tax free baby. So yeah. Let us put together a plan for you. Hit the uh the calendly bucket button. Let's set up a fifteen minute coffee chat where you know, we'll just talk about what, what concerns you right now and see if there's an interest in going forward and then we'll put together a, a an action plan and, and let you see some real world numbers on paper. So 
Thank you very much for joining us today. Please subscribe to our channel, Sage Smart Solutions. We'll be providing <laughs> content every week to help you protect your assets and retire tax-free. Have a great week.